for centuries we have pondered over the thought, do ghosts exist? So many have claimed to see ghosts in different guises. Are they real, or are they just a wishful craving on our part to want to believe? The UK, the most haunted country on this planet. But why do ghosts come here? Why do they haunt us? Tonight I've invited six paranormal investigation teams to join me to search for the most haunted town in the UK. We're here today in the sleepy town of Crowland in Lincolnshire, in the heart of the Fens. This picturesque town dates back to well before AD 716, when it was known as Croyland and was referred to by King Ethelbard because it was a unique and wondrous bridge that stood in the centre of the town. The town was once separated by waterways, and so this connecting bridge was built, known locally as Trinity Bridge. It is unusual in the fact that it has three walkways. Although it was originally made of wood, it was replaced by the monks of Crowland Abbey between the years 1360 to 1390. So that's the town. But what are the six locations that our teams are going to investigate tonight? Crowland Abbey, a once busy and active monastery, had its foundation stones laid by King Ethelbard in 716 AD, but has been destroyed on three separate occasions throughout its history. Inside the church, displayed in a glass case, is rumoured to be the skull of the Abbot Theodore, who was slain at the altar of the monastery in 850 AD, when the Danes invaded. The skull actually shows the mark of the cruel blow that took his life. It was on this occasion that it first fell into ruin. The second and third time it was destroyed by fire. So who or what actually roams the grounds of the abbey here? There's been reports of chants and monk-like singing, ghostly figures of monks walking through. You never know, possibly even the abbot Theodore himself may wander the grounds. Built in 1730, this former coaching house, which has changed its name a couple of times, lays claim to house two ghosts. It's claimed that Henry Girdleston, a former employee who used to tether horses of visiting guests here, actually haunts room number five. And what of the unknown woman that is said to walk along the passageway behind me? I've seen a lady in this bar you're supposed to haunt the corridor and room five and my husband's seen a man. Whether it's the Henry Girdlestone that's supposed to haunt, we don't know. The Crown. A pub with some very strange things happening. No sooner does the landlord start doing refurbishment work or try to improve the place, the things start to get torn down again. For example, to my right here you see a front bay window. The lounge was refurbished, no sooner was it completed than a car was banging straight through into it, destroying it. So who or what is actually here, preventing him trying to improve the place? Uh, the departing landlord said to me, Peter, you'll find some funny things happen around here. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, things disappear. Um, sometimes there is some damage which you can't account for. He said, we put it down to the Frank effect. So I said, well, what do you mean by the Frank effect? He said, well, there was a previous uh, landlord who apparently drunk too much and, and died here, and his ghost still haunts the premises. On the outskirts of the town resides Gull Farm. A former employee who was here for over 20 years, who passed in the early 60s, has actually been seen to walk, still roaming this farm in the building behind me. Back in the 1800s, just outside the farm, on a wet and windy night, a horse and carriage and its occupants hurtled off the road, plunging to an icy death in the depths of the pond, referred to locally as the bottomless pit. Is the carriage doomed to reenact its last fatal journey again and again? The story goes that horse and wagon um, went into there many years ago. They talk about it being bottomless. It does drop away very fast from the side, so um, you know it's not a place that you would actually play in. The fishermen that have stayed all night have seen all sorts of 
things down there. Okay, so we're at the Crown now, Neil. Now, there's something connected to these tyres, I believe. Well, it's a very interesting story because there's one particular tyre which he has moved from this spot, put it behind the wall here, Yeah. and it's moved to a particular location, which is there. So you're telling me that that tyre has moved from behind that wall to there by unforeseen forces? Yes, yeah, so the landlord's moved it to there, and on several occasions it's moved itself from that position back over there. I feel an experiment coming on. I reckon we should exactly I do that I think we should tonight. move the tyre and see what happens tonight. Yes. Okay. Right, that's the tyre in place. If I come and check on that in the night, see if anything's happened, but definitely come back in the morning to see if it's moved. Okay. Okay? So as the sun now sets across the Lincolnshire Fens, it's time for us to go and join the first team and watch them arrive at their chosen location. Um, well, when we get started, we'll, yeah. we'll look to start about half eleven. I'll tell you what, shall we and Gav go and get the flashes and stuff out yeah. of the cars first, and then um, yeah. we'll um, get the equipment yeah. set up and rolling. The atmosphere's changed straight away when you walk from one room to the other. Can you show that to us? He's a mover, he's a shifter, mm -hmm. and he's not happy about any of us being in this room. Mm -hmm. See, if we were in here 20 minutes ago, yeah. and we had to go, the guy was just happy enough. Uh, Thanks, David. Oh. Paul. You alright, Paul? Back up from here, Paul. Oh. Get me on, get me on. Come on, my legs are gone. Oh, he's trying with me. Oh, he's trying with me. Come on, but I'm strong, isn't that? No way. Hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. I'm in the wrong atmosphere. Before you came, actually, um, we were told to get out. And then we went back. We had an agitated guy all night. And uh, I think, obviously, in the presence of uh, David there as well. Uh, let's kick it off. Go on, my arms, Yeah. Fingertips are going right on ice at the moment. Well, yeah. Is it dropping some major more? fluctuations, major, it's going from 26 down to 19 seconds. He has literally turned my hand. All we had there was a guy, I said earlier on, we weren't welcome. But not in a nasty way, we forced that. We forced that. Okay. Stalling now. He's shouting, blasphemers. Uh, walking in the shadow of the valley of death, I fear no evil. <laughs> Got to laugh with him, haven't you? We had warnings all night, Simon. Yes, it was right on my, right up to my face. Oh my god! <laughs> See these fluctuations, Dan. You just had a ten degree temperature drop in about three seconds. Mm. He's touching the top of me. He's laying his hands on me. He's trying to bless me. Poor creature. I think I'm too far gone to be blessed, sir. Repent and ye shall be saved. He had a stroke. Which was his left side. Five. He felt threatened. He's been, he felt a threat. You know, he wasn't the threat. We were the threat to him. We had strange experiences in the upper corridor, which was particularly nasty, and nobody felt comfortable there. Two of us came to tears at separate occasions. Um, trigger objects moved up there, there were drafts up there, and just a general feeling of, of fear and oppression, really. Um, room five had a rustling noise in it that caused two of us to completely freak out <laughs> and leg it back up the corridor. Uh, it's a very haunted village. Um, and I think the evidence, when it's all brought together, will show there is a lot of activity here. So all in all, very spooky place. I wouldn't want to live here. <laughs> no way. <laughs> so, is Crowland the most haunted town in the UK? Or do you know better? <laughs> <laughs>